Hello and welcome to today's open event where we'll be looking at our programs in human tissue repair, precision medicine and respiratory clinical science. Thanks very much for joining us today. My name is Kate Thomas and I'm the events officer for the Faculty of Medical Sciences here at UCL and your chair this afternoon. We're really hoping this session will, get, will give you an insight into what it is really like to study in our division of medicine. So this afternoon, our speakers, Markella, Richard and Vitor, will provide a summary of our exciting postgraduate programmes. And there'll be a Q&A session and plenty of interactive opportunities for you all to join in throughout today's session. This session is being recorded and will be made available on our website following today's event. We're here to respond to your questions, so please share those throughout using the Q&A function on Zoom. Now to introduce our speakers. We have Markella Pontigos. Markella is Associate Professor and Programme Lead for the MSc MRes in Human Tissue Repair at UCL. She is also a Group Leader in the Research Department of Inflammation within UCL Division of Medicine. And Richard Day. Richard is Professor of Regenerative Medicine Technology and Programme Lead for the MSc in Precision Medicine at UCL. Richard is Director of, of the Centre for Precision Healthcare and leads the UCL Applied Biomedical Engineering Group, which are both based in the UCL Division of Medicine. And Vitor Tuxera. Vitor is the Director of the MSc in Respiratory Clinical Science at UCL. Vitor is the lecturer Director of the Embassy in Respiratory Clinical Science and Deputy Postgraduate Research Tutor at UCL Division of Medicine. So before I hand over to you all, we have a few very quick couple of polls for you to answer. I'll just launch those for you all. So the first question, if you can let us know where you are currently based, whether that's outside of the UK or in the UK. And the second question is, how would you describe yourself? Uh, so the options are healthcare professional, life science graduate, other science graduate, or just other. Perfect, I can see those results are coming in. Thank you, everyone. So I've just shared those results so you can all see. Uh, so we currently have about 60% who are based outside of the UK and 40% in the UK. And we have a large amount of life science, life science graduates, which is fantastic, 80%. And 20% I can see are other science graduates. Well, thank you so much everyone for submitting your answers. And I won't uh, take, you, take your attention away any longer, but I will hand over to Markella. Thank you so much, Markella. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Uh, it's, uh, well, I would say it's good to see you. I haven't seen you yet, but I'll share my screen. Um, and hopefully you can see it. Can you can you see that? Yes. So uh, I'm Michaela Pontikos, as Kate mentioned, and I lead the program of human tissue repair. Uh, and my students, the students who take this program on, um, can either ga gain a master's uh, of science or a, a master's of research. Um, human tissue repair program is very much a multi-disciplinary uh, um, program. Uh, our ethos is that we inter that in through integrated um, uh, 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 disciplines we can tackle uh, the challenges that we face in, in understanding human disease. Um, and this program is taught at, UC, uh, at the divisions of medicine and surgery, um, but there are uh, 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 people from the pharmaceutical industry who are uh, contributing to the program. Um, and uh, the uh, 
program gives you access to globally renowned scientists, technicians, uh, clinicians, um, and, and research laboratories uh, throughout UCL, not just the Division of Medicine and Surgery. And, uh, and this uh, program has been designed um, uh, with uh, to provide as much choice and flexibility. So it's basically you create a, a, a tailor-made program. Uh, we try to use innovative teaching methods and all the skills that you gain here will be useful uh, in any setting in your future careers. We also have a variety of, of graduate destinations, um, but I will touch that in a minute. So what is it about? Uh, basically, we learn, uh, you will learn about the complex systems and processes of, of tissue repair in the human body after injury, uh, during uh, tissue regeneration and in disease. Uh, we look at, uh, in, in, this, in this picture, you can see um, if you could imagine human tissue repair uh, as, a, as, a, as a whole, uh, many programs uh, give you a, a view from only one side. And in human tissue repair, we try to give you a global um, a, approach. We look at uh, uh, the infl inflammatory response uh, in human tissues during repair, regeneration and disease. We look at the immune responses uh, and we look at uh, intervention and therapies, all the current intervention and therapies, um, concentrating on transplantation science, engineering and stem, and stem cell therapies. It's taught at, mainly at the Royal Free Hospital, which is where um, uh, part of our medical school is, uh, in the Division of uh, Medicine and Surgery, but also at the Institute of Infection, Immunity and Transplantation Sciences, where we have very close links with clinical departments, core technologies, and reach research projects for our students in this course uh, tend to be all over UCL. So from the Institute of Child Health to the main uh, Bloomsbury cam uh, campus uh, research laboratories as well at the as at the role three. The program uh, gives you uh, a degree of of choice. Uh, in the first term, everybody does uh, this. It, it's, it's a leveler to, um, a term where everybody gets to do the same thing, just to uh, to um, uh, kind of. Uh, make sure that everybody's knowledge is on the same level uh, and uh, and the skills that they require uh, are there to uh, use for uh, term two and three which are uh, the, the, the terms where you exercise some choice. Um, you in term two you can choose one of two pathways uh, one is the immunotherapy pathway and one is the transplantation science pathway. In other words, one is a, uh, a pathway about mechanism and immune response and inflammation and, and the, how the mechanisms of disease. Transplantation science is more, more a, an intervention pathway. And you have a choice of several um, modules as well as uh, research pro uh, projects. Uh, we, the, the, the program is taught through uh, small uh, uh, problem-based tutorials and le learning activities, as well as class uh, classical lectures uh, and um, online and face-to-face. -face. Uh, as, as well, we have uh, organized the program in, in, uh, on, on the Moodle pages. Uh, of UCL. This is a platform where, where uh, you will find everything uh, about your, your uh, program, uh, including uh, timetables, material, uh, learning material, assessments, uh, etc. And um, the assessments are basically coursework, multiple choice answers, uh, questions, short answer questions, presentations, um, Po uh, oral uh, and poster presentations. 
Uh, we have a, a, a laboratory, labor, a practical laboratory skills module, which prepares you for your uh, time in research um, uh, labs for your research project. And there you will learn all uh, the, the theoretical and practical uh, um, uh, introduction to experimental te techniques that you will uh, most likely use in your, in your research project. And the research projects are very varied. And the way I deal with those is that I, I help you choose something um, that is uh, to your scientific interest. Uh, so everybody does something that they really want to do uh, and uh, do really well in. Um, our graduates, so these, this is a picture of 2019-2020 cohort because they were all in, in uh, UCL at the time, and you can see most of them are have gone on to do PhDs. Uh, the rest are either in uh, pharmaceutical com uh, companies or doing other research-based um, uh, jobs. But uh, apart from that, we uh, uh, some have gone into medicine. Some of our graduates go to medicine, other healthcare um, uh, professionals, so, such as clinical trials. Um, and some go on to do um, tissue engineering, um, pharma, uh, but even more unrelated uh, careers such as patent law um, uh, have been uh, uh, followed after finishing the MSc in human tissue repair. I'm very happy to discuss any questions and please contact me. Uh, on my email at any point. Thank you. Thank you so much, Markella. Now over to you, Richard. Hello, everyone. Um, hopefully you can see my slides. Um, so uh, my name's Richard Day. I'm the Programme Director for the MSc in Precision Medicine. Um, and what I'm going to do today is give you a bit of background information about the course and how it's structured. So before I do that, I thought I'd give you a, a very brief definition of what we define as precision medicine at UCL. So there are some different um, definitions of this term uh, that are used around the world. Um, it's sometimes called personalised medicine, um, but our approach to precision medicine is essentially the uh, application and um, definition of medicine in terms of it, it being a specific approach to treatment of disease uh, in terms of its diagnosis and subsequent uh, clinical outcomes. So this slide here gives you a, an overview of uh, essentially what conventional medicine is. So this is what precision medicine isn't. This is the opposite. So conventionally, it's a trial and error approach. The patient uh, has symptoms, the doctor makes a diagnosis of what they think the disease is and what is the best treatment. And they are given a, almost like a generic treatment that is considered to be of benefit to, to a wide uh, proportion of the population. If that works, great. If it doesn't, the patient then comes back and the cycle begins again. So it's very unspecific. And obviously that's not very good in terms of uh, treating patients which may uh, have terminal diseases. So they might not have a huge amount of time for these sort of trial and error approaches to take place. Um, it also means that a lot of medicines are given out to patients which don't necessarily benefit the patient. And this obviously costs a lot of time in terms of treatment and also uh, in terms of the patient perhaps not being able to work because of, of their condition. So, the one size fits all approach doesn't work and that's why there's a big drive for precision medicine. So the precision medicine here is where there are stratified approaches in terms of how the treatment is um, managed and this can include a lot of new technologies uh, that are based on data that's derived from the patient and biomarkers that are derived from the patient and there's lots of different ways that these these uh, data are, are gained with, with new techniques. So we're talking about uh, the omic technologies um, and things like liquid biopsies and, and, and those types of things. So there's 
there's a whole new realm of, of medicine coming forward, uh, which is trying to make medicine more personalized and a, and a more precise approach to treating patients. So at UCL, the Precision Medicine course um, focuses on how disease can be precisely diagnosed and how there are modern delivery methods um, available to actually treat these conditions. So there are lots of, of uh, practitioners of precision medicine at UCL. So for the course, we're able to bring those experts in and they're able to provide first-hand experience of how precision medicine is being used and also some of the emerging technologies that are coming through um, that will form future treatments um, in, in a few years time. We've also got links with um, industry. So obviously there are, uh, it's not just about the sort of clinical practice of, of precision medicine. Life science industries are looking for graduates that have um, skills and competencies in these new areas um, that relate to precision medicine. So the course covers many different aspects, both the application of precision medicine, but also some of the new technologies that are coming through in terms of the um, delivery methods and the diagnostics. And so we hope that this course will provide um, students with knowledge and skills that um, can be applied to this area and also in a way that's tailored towards what, their, what the students' interests are. So I'll talk a little bit more about the structure of the course in a moment, but what we want to be able to do is to provide flexibility so that you can tailor your degree according to your interests and hopefully where you want to go to uh, in, in terms of your career in the future. So in terms of the structure of the course, um, so it's, it's a one year course and um, in term one, there are four core modules that you can see on the left hand side of the screen. So those are modules that everyone has to take um, as part of the course. And these are, are quite a, a broad spread of uh, topics, but they provide a good grounding in terms of, of what's um, essentially the core components um, for precision medicine. There's also a core module that's taught um, in term two. So there's a total of five core taught modules. Um, and as I said, these are modules that everyone has to take. In addition to those five core taught modules, there are three optional taught modules. So these are, are modules where you can then start to tailor the course uh, according to what your interests are and perhaps where you want to go to in the future with your career. Um, and in addition to, to the taught modules, there's also a research project. So this is where you're able to get into the lab and uh, do projects that are related to precision medicine um, and you know, hopefully get lots of experience um, that's relevant to, to what you're interested in. A little bit more about the, the research project. So what we do is we encourage students to, um, to go out and look across UCL in terms of areas that they're particularly interested in. So you can draw on the wealth of expertise and skills that exist at UCL and find a project supervisor that will be able to, to help you do a project that you're particularly interested in. The division also provides a list of, of projects that are available um, to, to all students on all master's courses uh, in the division. But as I said, most, most years we've been able to um, have students go out and they actually initiate finding the projects themselves and have then have gone on to to work on projects that they're particularly interested in. Um, obviously, we want you to get as much experience as possible. Um, and also we want you to generate hopefully new knowledge that will benefit not just yourselves, but um, also your supervisors, because obviously you're doing research and hopefully it's new, uh, new areas that haven't been looked at before. Here are some examples of some of the research projects. These are actually just from, uh, from last year's cohort. Um, so you can see there's quite a big variety of, of projects that are available um, and it ranges from uh, AI data-driven projects through to imaging projects. Um, and then there's some um, uh, sort of more genomic-based uh, projects as well. So there's a broad range of, of um, projects that are available. And as I've said, these can be tailored to your to your particular interests. So that's uh, that's it for, for my slides. So I'll end my um, end my uh, slide sharing there.
and uh, I think I'm going to hand over to, to Vitor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Richard. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> Can you see my slides? Yeah, perfect. So uh, thank you, Kate, for the, for the kind introduction. So I'm Vitor Teixeira. I'm the director of the Respiratory Clinical Science MAC. And it's my big pleasure to be here today with, with all of you uh, to give you a brief description about our program. So I will start this, um, this presentation as I usually start my lectures with a question. So why it's so important to study respiratory medicine? I don't know if you are aware, but uh, more than 1 billion people uh, across the world uh, suffers from a respiratory disease. And sadly, in UK, every five minutes, a person dies with a lung disease. So we need more scientists. We need to train and, and, um, and provide a strong background, both scientifically and clinically, uh, in respiratory medicine, because we need to solve these huge health issues. So... That's why we created this program. So in this program, we'll give you all the scientific and clinical basis of respiratory medicine with all the modules directed to understand the respiratory diseases and how these diseases affect patients. So this, this program will be taught by lecturers and clinicians that are part of the UCL Division of Medicine, UCL Respiratory, UCLH uh, Medicine Department and the Royal Free Hospital Respiratory Department. So during this program, you'll have access to world experts in respiratory medicine research. Uh, we'll also um, access uh, respiratory clinicians and uh, pharmaceutical experts. Uh, we also have an innovative teaching. I will uh, touch this briefly um, further down uh, with different uh, learning uh, activities. And uh, during your um, MSc respiratory uh, research project, you will have access to the UCL respiratory laboratories. So um, this, how is uh, the, this program structured? So we have eight uh, compulsory uh, taught modules. So four in term one and four in term two. And in term three, you'll have the research project. So in term one, you have the principles of immunology, principles of inflammation, tissue repair and regeneration, and statistical methods in research modules. So you have here in this slide, the pictures of the, the model leads. In term two, you have the principles of respiratory biology, respiratory diseases and conditions, and drug discovery respiratory medicine. I'm the model lead of these three modules and the practical laboratory research skills. In term three, as I said, you will spend three and a half months uh, in the UCL respiratory labs during your uh, research project. So uh, in term one, uh, you will learn uh, the different biological process that, you know, the dysregulation of this process are involved in with uh, the respiratory diseases. So you'll learn more about uh, immunity, inflammation, uh, and tissue repair and regeneration. And this is very important because knowing the scientific basis of the diseases will lead you to understand how patients develop symptoms and how these uh, um, respiratory diseases manifest within the patients. Um, the last module for term one is statistical medicine research. Um, as you know, we have been living in a pandemic from the past two years, and we always uh, we all saw in the news uh, clinical trials data, you know, the, from the vaccines, we saw, you know, uh, data from, from, um, from uh, some research projects about COVID. So this module will give you a, a more, um, and I will give you a, a, a huge understanding about how to analyze raw research data. So you'll learn about mathematical formals, models, and techniques that are included in statistical analysis you also have um, an introduction to bioinformatic analysis. So how to use statistics to um, analyze uh, bioinformatic data. In term two, uh, in the principles of respiratory biology, you will learn about the structural characteristics and the complex cellular and molecular mechanisms, um, and also the physiology of the respiratory um, system. Uh, in terms of the respiratory disease and conditions, you will learn all the key scientific and clinical aspects of different respiratory diseases, including IPF, for example, lung cancer, COVID, uh, 
uh, TB, pneumonia, um, pediatric respiratory diseases, and sleep apnea. Finally, you'll have the drug discovery in respiratory medicine, in which you will learn about the scientific and pharmacological basis for the discovery and development of novel therapeutic engines in respiratory diseases. The last model of term two, uh, the practical laboratory research skills, will prepare you for the research project that will take place in term three. So in this module, you'll learn the theory and the practical in, uh, about different experimental techniques that are required in the lab. And this will include, for example, cell culture, um, isolation of DNA, RNA and protein, uh, uh, PCR, qPCR, and, and so on. So the research project will take place in term three and they will take place in the UCL respiratory um, labs. As you can see, you can see some image of our labs here. So we are um, you know, a big uh, respiratory department and we have three different groups, the Lungs for Living Research Center, the Center for Inflammation and Tissue Repair and Center for Respiratory Biology. Within these centers, as you can see, you have different uh, groups that are related to the study and the research of a specific respiratory disease. For example, we have a lung carcinogenesis group that is focused to study lung cancer. Uh, for example, you have uh, the COPD and bronchiotasis group that you know, focuses to study the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And for example, in the Center for Respiratory Biology, you'll have uh, antitrypsin deficiency and um, other ser serpinopathies research group. So how we um, use our innovative teaching. So we have um, a traditional classroom in which you'll attend lectures. Um, and after you'll do your homework, um, you'll read some papers. Um, but we also have a flip classroom. So this means that you will be given a question, a problem, and you will um, um, present this, this question, for example, a journal club or an oral presentation or a poster presentation in a, a session called the tutorial. So these are small groups um, that will, um, in, in which you will present this, um, the, the solution for, for this problem. What is very special about this program is the clinical component of the program. So uh, you'll have what I call the clinical tutorials. So you will have, um, you will observe uh, pulmonary function tests that will be de delivered by clinicians at UCLH Lung Physiology Lab. You'll see live patient testing. Uh, you'll also sit in diagnostic sessions, um, for example, with Professor Sam James, Sam James in the lung cancer diagnostic session or Professor Jeremy Brown in the infections um, respiratory clinic or Joanna Porter with the interstitial lung disease uh, clinic. You will also observe some uh, respiratory procedures, for example, bronchoscopies at UCLH. And finally, you will sit as well every week in what we call the multidisciplinary team meetings in which you know, uh, clinicians from different, different specialities will discuss um, specific um, patient cases. You, during term two, you'll also attend a lab-based tutorials in which you will know more about um, airway epithelial cells and how to, for example, stain a specific um, airway epithelial cell uh, using immunofluorescence. So this program is taught, is taught at uh, the Royal Free um, in the UCL Medical School. Uh, term one, you'll have some lectures and tutorials at Royal Free. Um, in term uh, one model of term one and the term two and term three will take place at Bloomsbury campus. Um, so you have your clinical tutorials at UCL hospitals and the research project, as I said, in the UCL respiratory labs. So after you finish uh, this MSc, you'll be able to apply for a variety of different jobs. For example, you can apply to, to become a PhD student or a, a, a research assistant in biomedical research. You can also apply for pharmaceutical and pharmaceutical companies or biotech companies, or, or, or even be involved in public health and clinical trials labs. So you can find uh, more information about this program in these two uh, websites. Um, you can also contact me by, um, by email and I'm more than happy to have a meeting on, on Teams online uh, to discuss if you, know, if you want to know more about, about this program. So this is, I will finish with some quotes from uh, the um, MSc class of 2021 and I'm more than happy to, to answer your questions. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Vitor and Richard and Markella for your presentations. I can see that we've had some questions come in in the chat, which um, thank you so much, Richard, for, for chipping in already and answering some of those. Um, just going over them. So I can see that we've got a question from Amelia about the what qualities are you looking for an applicant for precision medicine? Richard, I don't know whether you wanted to elaborate on your answer that you submitted for Amelia. Uh, yeah, hello. Um, so I think this, this applies to all of the MSc courses, really. So we're, we're looking for, for obviously hardworking, enthusiastic students. So, so an MSc is a step up from uh, a BSc or an undergraduate uh, level course. So we do expect more um, self-directed learning. So that means that you know, you'll be given a lecture, but we expect you to do quite a lot of reading around the subject so that you really develop your knowledge and skills uh, in, in, in the particular topic. Uh, and then in addition to that, obviously, um, particularly for, for the precision medicine course, it's quite uh, multidisciplinary. So there are different subject areas that come into the, into the course or different disciplines rather that come into the course. Um, so again, we, we want people that are open-minded, that want to learn new, uh, new subjects and new, uh, new knowledge, uh, perhaps that's not necessarily just focusing on one discipline uh, but in a num number of other areas. Um, and I'm sure Vitor and Markella can speak the same about their courses as well. Um, you know, that I, I, I'll, let them, <laughs> I'll let them add to that. I, I think uh, you summed it up perfectly. We need um, students who are um, hardworking, self-motivated, um, and who actually want to take advantage of UCL, being at UCL and all it can offer. And, and that's quite, um, quite significant, the amount of, of advantages that you, that you would gain coming to UCL. Um, and not just uh, for, for through the course, the, the individual course. So um, you wouldn't, I, I, I like to have my students be quite proactive um, and um, enthusiastic. Enthusiasm is the, the key thing. I could just add in something that's else awesome. as well, just, 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 just from what Mark Ellis said. I mean, building on that, there, there are lots of, um, not just clubs and societies at UCL, but there are lots of seminars, research seminars, almost on a daily basis, you can find uh, a seminar somewhere within UCL that you're welcome to go to, they're, they're open, they're, they're often at lunchtime, um, so you can go in and you can have a, have a listen to, to a subject area that perhaps you, you've not got any previous experience in, um, and pick up new ideas, and perhaps spark a bit of interest in something that you might not have considered before. So take, you know, I strongly recommend taking advantage of all those things. Um, the, the sort of publication of, or adver advertisement of when these seminars take place is circulated to everyone. So you can see when they, when they take place. Fantastic. I think actually we probably answered um, Maru's question as well, um, which was for human tissue repair. What advice would you offer for someone that aims to apply for this course? Um, yes, can I just uh, add to uh, mm -hmm. what I was get, uh, what I just said? That if you specifically want to apply for human tissue repair, can you uh, I, I, please feel free to talk to me uh, because it's a it's a very um, complex uh, course, and as I said, there's a, an element of tailor making a. a, a a, a very um, uh, tailor-made program for you. So I'm very happy if you email me to, to, um, to go through the possibilities with you. But more importantly, could you please uh, apply if you are going to apply sooner rather than later because um, our deadlines for applications are not, uh, they, they close quite soon. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Markella. And I thought we could actually go back to Amelia's uh, question, which I know Richard answered live, but um, probably 
is applicable across um, all courses. And it, her question is about what are the modes of teaching in precision medicine, MSc, but again, across the, the other programmes as well. I know um, it's a big question that we're getting across um, most of our postgraduate events. So it would be um, great to hear your viewpoint on that one. Do you want me to, to address that or? Yes, please, uh, Richard. Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, so uh, the, the lectures that we, that we conduct, particularly this year going forward, um, are all face-to-face -face, um, at the moment. And we, we plan for that to, to continue. Uh, so we want all the students to be on campus, um, to be taught um, in a, in a uh, sort of a, a communal environment. Uh, we think there are lots of benefits for that. And obviously we, we want everyone to be on, on campus so they can get the benefits um, from some of the things that we just talked about. Um, there are some, uh, so in addition to classroom based lectures, um, as Markella has, has pointed out for her course, there are lab based sessions as well. So uh, one of the optional modules is a, is a purely lab based module uh, where, you, where you learn new lab techniques. Um, so it's particularly good for people that haven't got a lot of background experience in the lab. Um, and there are some uh, more sort of in silico based modules where much of the, much of the course is taught uh, on sort of a self-directed approach whereby you're given bits of coursework and you uh, do, the, do the analysis and then you upload it. And then there's a group session at the end of the end of the, the activity where everyone gets together to discuss the the, uh, the analyses. So so there's lots of different ways of, of learning, um, but the majority is um, classroom based lectures. So for for respiratory, uh, we have uh, you know a special component which is the clinical tutorial so we have as well as we should said we have our traditional classroom uh, but we also have in every week and for every topic uh, to you know um, to have a strong knowledge about this specific topic we we do tutorials as well and as I said before these tutorials are small group tutorials and we we aim to, we we ask the students to prepare you know oral presentations or you know we want to give the students with and, and provide students with different skills that they they don't have at this point right so this is quite important and uh, the clinical tutorials because they will be able to uh, join um, and observe um, you know these these uh, clinical sessions at UCLH so at uh, one of the best hospitals uh, in UK if not in the world so uh, so yeah it's we have a huge uh, variety of uh, teaching activities that we we are providing for for the respiratory program and I think it's the same for human tissue repair um, we also have uh, problem-based tutorials, as I said earlier, in which we're trying to, I mean, uh, you're going to be faced, if you're doing human tissue, by very complex um, mechanisms, ideas um, of human disease. And uh, the best way of learning is not just uh, learning uh, through lecture notes. We, we believe that you, you learn through trying to solve problems. Um, in, in the same manner as you would if you were part of the medical school, actually. Um, and so uh, that also has a, an added advantage that at the end of the terms uh, of the modules, you, you actually find that your revision is much easier because you've learned as you went along throughout each um, each week and each theme and it, each topic. So it, it kind of fosters uh, um, a, a, a much deeper learning um, this way. So that's the way we do it too. And uh, let me touch in, in a very important point for all of us, I believe as director of the programs, the students will get a very, very, very detailed feedback throughout their, their, their program. And this is very important, not only for the summative assessments, but also for formative assessments. So, you know, they will learn and they will 
they will at the end of the program they will uh, you know they'll they will develop different skills not only you know how to write an essay for example because we are providing um, as a division, we are providing an academic writing course, for example, uh, but how to present um, a poster or how to present a, a scientific paper. Uh, so they, they, this is very important for us, and I'd like to point this out. Thank you, Vito. I think, um, Richard, you probably beat me to uh, Katerina's question, but um, we can answer it live as well. Uh, so again, regarding the MSc in precision medicine, can we choose any combination of optional modules or are there restrictions on maybe specific combinations we can take? So um, we haven't restricted the uh, combination of mo optional modules that students take. Um, there is sometimes a clash of maybe one or two lectures with some of the modules. Um, so we try and identify that before um, the, the modules are selected, just to advise the students that that might be the case. Um, that has happened in, in every year that we've been running the course, um, and it hasn't caused the problem for the students because they, they catch up with the, the notes from the, from the lecture or there's a recording of the lecture um, available so that it, it, they're able to sort of like catch up with, with what they've potentially missed in that particular lecture. So. Um, it doesn't cause a problem um, and you know we, we try and make it as flexible as possible so um, but again we, we advise or we look at the timetable before that just to make sure that um, it's not going to cause any major issue. Thank you Richard. We have a question that would actually be applicable across the panel so um, how are the experiences of international students under these medicine-based programs? Do they graduate and go on to work in the UK or would they be able to apply lessons for their home countries? I could start um, Thanks, to Michael. answer that. Um, I have a lot of, uh, more than half of my students are international students. And I also have the additional um, uh, characteristic in my course that I, I also have clinicians as well as biomedical science students, as well as people who are in biophysics or bioengineering, um, and because it is a multidisciplinary uh, program. Uh, all of my students, whether home or uh, international students, uh, graduate and go into jobs uh, either in academia as, as PhD students, including PhD students in the UK, um, I, last year I had three students who uh, have got PhDs and they're overseas students and that's not easy um, to do uh, to gain to gain funding for international students in, in other words uh, for a PhD but also uh, many have gone back to their uh, country of origin and um, for example clinicians who come and do my course uh, do it because they want to start some uh, research so they go back to their home countries continue with their medicine and do research or they go into medical school either here in the UK or in in the in in their own country or um, in pharmaceutical companies which are global so they end up all over the world so um, I find that in the six years that we've been running the human tissue repair program in its current format, um, being from overseas has not stopped anyone really. <laughs> so that's that's from our uh, perspective. Vito, did you have anything you wanted to add? No. No, I think it was a very detailed and a great, a great answer from, from Markel and it's very similar to our program as well. Only to give an example, our program started only uh, two years ago. This is our second year. And last year, uh, I have two students, uh, two PhD students in my lab, one from Markel's program. Uh, she did a human tissue repair MSc and joined uh, my lab as a PhD student and one from another program that we have within the, the, the division of medicine. Um, and applied by medical imaging. So, you know, um, so it's, it's, uh, 
old students both overseas and uh, and um and both sorry both of students are overseas students so um you know so it's uh, it's uh, we we it's very i'm not saying easy but you know we we our programs can uh, provide students to ski, uh, provide students with the skills for them to apply to different types of jobs fantastic and richard i don't know if you wanted to add anything from your program specific uh, examples maybe not really no i mean i think vito and uh, Markella have, have covered that really well so so perfect well i think actually we have a couple of questions that have come in specifically for you richard so um i'll just read through those uh, so judy has a question regarding one of the optional modules in the precision medicine msc course the personalized medicine says term one and two um, so does that mean this module runs over two terms? If this is the case, then does this mean that if this module is chosen, the student can only choose one more optional module rather than two? Okay, so, so if I answer that in reverse order, so uh, no, that doesn't mean to say that they can only select one extra optional module. That This module that runs over the two terms is only considered to be one optional module. So you are still able to select another two optional modules. Um, the way that, that this particular optional module runs is that it's, it's run over the course of um, two block weeks. So it's Monday to Friday in term one and then Monday to Friday in term two. Um, so it's more of a sort of intense module, uh, but it is spread over the two terms. Um, so I think that answers the question. So this uh, this particular module that you're referring to is actually run by the Institute of Child Health. And so that, again, we brought this optional module into the course because we wanted to have uh, a sort of a perspective from the paediatric medicine side of things. So obviously the Institute of Child Health specializes in uh, treating children. And uh, there's a, a big area of precision medicine involved in that um, so we wanted to bring that into the into the course as well but that's partly why that course is run over two terms is because it's a, a, a module that's run outside of the division of medicine I hope that answers the question thank you Richard and I just have another question to add to that one um, do the expectations of student research projects and dissertations differ depending on the sort of project e.g. computational data analytical versus wet bench? No, so the, the assessment criteria will be the same. Um, so you know, the, in terms of how the, the projects are marked, uh, we'll be looking for the same levels of quality um, in, in different areas, um, regardless of whether it's a wet bench uh, project or, a, or a, um, in silico uh, analytical data and analysis type project, um, the, 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 cri the marking criteria will be the same, so that they're, they're, you're judged on the same basis, basically. Perfect. And I'm not sure if we answered this one in the previous question, but I will ask it again, just to clarify. Um, so are all of the optional modules reserved for term two, or are students meant to enrol in one optional module during term one, and then their remaining optional modules in term two? So um, you're not expected to enrol in optional modules in either term one or term two. The, there are two optional modules that run in term one. Um, so one is the, the module I was talking about with the Institute of Child Health, and the other one is um, machine learning in healthcare. And that's also run in term one. Um, so if you were to select both of those optional modules, then you'd only select one optional module in term two, because that would be your total of three optional modules. Alternatively, if you don't select any of those, either of those two modules, then you can select all of your optional modules in term three. Um, so I think that, that addresses that question. Perfect, thank you. And we just have another question, um, a broader question. So if uh, any of our attendees today have questions beyond the session, um, is there a contact that is best to contact you all on uh, for, for, for further information? If there's a generic email or do you prefer to be contacted directly? 
I would prefer to be contacted directly. Um, so I can put my email in the, uh, should I put my email in the chat? Okay. Yeah, or if you if you pop it in and make it available to everyone and okay. um, yeah. that way we'll all be able to see them. Yeah, I, I also prefer to uh, be contacted uh, by everyone, that would be great. Uh, in, in person and I'm happy to meet on Teams or Zoom or whatever to discuss uh, the details of the program. Little, are you the uh, are you the same? I know sometimes there's um, a course yeah. inquiries link that, or email address that's yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'll put my email address there. Yes. Fantastic, thank you. And um, I know this is always quite a nice question as well that I like to ask when we have these events, but I'm just really interested in what inspired you to go into your fields. Um, so I, I thought maybe I could pose that question to Markella as a, as a starting point. So I'm, uh, um, uh, my, uh, scientific interests are a bit varied in that uh, my research is partly in fibrosis um, and connective tissue diseases, but also half my group works on specific um, remodeling in blood vessels. So I work in the cardiovascular field as well as in fibrosis. Um, and uh, my, uh, what inspired me, um, I'm, a, I'm a biochemist, a protein biochemist uh, by uh, training. Uh, and then I, over the years, I became a cell biochemist um, and a cell biologist. Um, and uh, what inspired me are proteins. It were the actual molecules that led to me questioning what they do and how they behave in, under normal conditions and under uh, disease and in disease and under disease conditions. And, and uh, 25, 30 years on, I still uh, am fascinated by them and, and I'm still inspired by them. So that's where I come from. <laughs> Wow, well, it's great. It must be a great area to go into if you're still inspired after 25 or so years. So <laughs> fantastic. And Vito, I don't know if you uh, wanted to share, um, obviously, yes. what inspired you to go into your field. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a biologist by training. Um, and it, I think what inspired me was to do science first and um, um, to know um, other countries as well. I think it's very important as a scientist because you interact with so many different people and so many different cultures that it's, it's an amazing uh, job. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so I did my PhD uh, in rheumatoid arthritis, uh, totally different from the area that I'm working now. I'm, I'm, I'm working in lung cancer. So I'm trying to understand how lung cancer progresses, you know, the pathogenesis that is involved uh, in lung cancer. And I think when I, I, I finished my PhD and for some personal familiar reasons, I wanted to um, study and research cancer. Um, it's such a complex uh, disease. It's such a, a catastrophic disease that it kills so many people that my, you know, my, what attract me and uh, my aim is uh, save lives or try to, my research um, you know, uh, that can, can save lives, uh, even if it's, uh, um, you know, developing diagnostic tools, you know, try to catch cancer early, um, you know, treatments or understanding the, the scientific um, processes that are involved in, in, in lung cancer. So, um, so, yeah, I think, you know, uh, all this combined um, is, uh, is an amazing job. And, uh, you know, that's why I think... Uh, delivering these programs, it's, it's such a good feeling because we want to train, we want to educate young scientists and we want to have, you know, new people in the field. And I believe this is transversal to, you know, all the, all the specialities, not only respiratory, but, you know, we need, we need new blood every year because we need, we need enthusiastic and hardworking people to try to, to solve all the health issues that we currently have. 
Thank you, Vito. And your note about to save lives, I don't think there's anything more inspirational than, than that. So um, that's definitely uh, something, uh, you know, a, a big achievement of your work as well. It's contributing towards. <laughs> and Richard, I don't know if you um, wanted to shed light on your your story. <laughs> yeah, I uh, can do. So, um, so my background is cell biology. Um, but about 20 years ago, um, it, there was the sort of excitement about tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. And there were these images of mice with ears on their back and this type of thing. And I, was, I was based in a hospital at the time. So I'm a scientist, but I was working in a, in a, in a clinical hospital. And we were asked or challenged to try and grow some artificial intestine. So uh, artificial gut. And to do that, we needed to try to grow cells on materials. So I had to go out and learn um, material science, basically. So I, I spent some time in a material science lab and that really sparked my interest in sort of interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary uh, research. Because obviously when you start to talk to people outside of your, if you call it silo, your academic uh, comfort zone, you start to connect with people that have got a different perspective, a different view on things. And that's how, you know, really exciting ideas can be generated. And, uh, you know, you, you can offer skills and strengths that they haven't got and vice versa. So you can then end up um, sort of moving forward potentially in, in new areas that haven't been looked at before and, and taking a different approach on things. Um, so I carry on in that theme. So um, my research is still very multidisciplinary. Um, and, and the precision medicine course, as I said, is, is very multidisciplinary as well. And hopefully some of that uh, sort of enthusiasm of people from different disciplines interacting with each other uh, can, can come through to, to the students that are on the course as well. And they, they will start to look outside of their uh, existing disciplinary boundaries uh, into other areas. And, and hopefully that, that will in, inspire them too. Fantastic. Well, I know I'm feeling inspired. So um, thank you. Thank you very much all for, for giving those contributions. And I can see that we haven't got any more questions in the Q&A. So hopefully that means we've addressed everyone's um, questions. But equally, you do have the contact information for, for all programmes today. So if you have any questions, and um, just to reciprocate again, what Richard, Vitor and Markella were saying earlier, please do contact them directly and they will be delighted to um, have a have a one to one chat with you for further details. And um, so, yeah, I think actually we can wrap up now, but um, just wanted to say thank you so much, everyone, for joining today we hope that it was helpful in you making your decision and um, we do have a very short survey at the end of this session so you can just give us some feedback about how you felt the event went and also just want to say thank you so much to our three speakers for providing such excellent presentations and we very much hope to see you again <laughs> thank you so thank much you everyone all. thank you all thank you so thank much you. thank you Bye-bye.